Hey everyone, it's Miss Bell here from the Science Lab, and today I am going to take two school subjects, um, kind of social studies and science, and we're going to merge those together. So we are in the month of February, and here in America we like to celebrate black history. February is the month of getting to know and research and learn about different black people throughout our country's history or people around the world, maybe not just from the United States. So our topic today is African American inventors. Yay! We're getting social studies, we're getting science, and we're getting to learn a little bit more about four or five different inventors. Now the first person I want to talk about is Benjamin Banneker. Now this man was born almost 300 years ago and during his life Benjamin did a lot of incredible things. As far as his education goes we would call him to be self-taught. He taught himself a lot of things. He didn't really get the type of schooling that we get these days because it was almost 300 years ago and things were a lot different back then. But as he grew up, he fell in love with math. And not only that, he fell in love with astronomy. He kept being interested in things around him and he pushed those interests and those likings to always figure out what can I make, what can I do, how can I make things better. He actually invented the first clock in our country and he created or wrote an almanac that had a lot of information for the people of that time. But one thing I really want to focus on with Benjamin is an irrigation system that he created for his family's farmland. Now when you talk about irrigation, that is the watering of plants on a farmland by using some sort of um, device. You're not going out there every day with a hose and watering it yourself. No, no, no. You're using pipes with holes in them to help carry water from one place to another. So he helped create this irrigation system that would help his family's farm survive any sort of drought that would happen during his lifetime. And when I say drought, that means there's no rain coming from the sky. The land gets really, really dry and to better support the soil and the uh, the vegetables and the fruit and whatever you're trying to um, plant, you need to come up with some sort of system to help water those plants since water is a basic need for plants. So the first thing I started to do with this irrigation um, activity was I took some straws and I taped them together to make it a longer piece. Then I grabbed some scissors and I chose to cut what I considered holes in my straws. I did try using a push pin, but I found out that those holes weren't big enough. And I couldn't use a hole puncher because it would poke holes on both sides of the straw. So I opted for scissors to cut these little triangle pieces out, which really act as holes in my straw uh, little pipeline that I have. Now after my um, irrigation system had all the holes I needed, I went and created a little makeshift bucket to hold my water. So I got a paper cup, I poked a hole in it, and then um, pushed my um, straw pipe through it. Now in order for you guys to see the water coming through my irrigation system, I just chose to color the water blue instead of having it be its regular clear self. Then I put my cup and straw pipe in a bucket 
And at first, I had it angled to where the cup was way higher than my straw. I poured my water into my cup because that was where I was holding and storing my water. And you can see the water move through the straw and come out of all those different holes. I then played around with the height of my cup and my pipe. Should they be level? Should my cup and my straw be kind of at the same level or should one be higher? And I felt that my end result was better when my cup that was holding the water was kind of at the same level as my straw. The second inventor I want to talk about is the peanut man. No, not that peanut man. Who I'm talking about is George Washington Carter. Now this man is a genius when it comes to inventions. He has taken soybeans, peanuts, and sweet potatoes, and he has crea created hundreds of different products from those types of crops. Now, as Mr. Carter was growing up, he was born into slavery. His parents were slaves. He wasn't very educated as a young boy, but he had a love and a passion for nature and art and agriculture and crops. And as he became older and became a teenager, he wanted to become more educated. So he tried and he tried to get into different colleges. Some colleges did not allow him to attend that school because of his race, the color of his skin. So he kept trying until he was able to finally go to a couple of colleges that would allow him to be successful as a student at that college. And he studied art, painting, and drawing, and he studied science in the form of um, botany and agriculture. And as he got older, he started experimenting in his science lab. And he came up with the idea that when you are a farmer working on a farmland, if you try to grow cotton, eventually that soil is, is going to lack nutrients because cotton doesn't give anything back to the soil. It just takes all of that nutrients out of the soil. So he thought of the idea, well, why don't you rotate your crops every two or three years? So maybe two years plant cotton, and then after that two years plant maybe peanuts or soybeans or sweet potatoes. And those types of crops are going to feed the soil all that healthy nutrients that it wants and it deserves. And then after you get your peanuts or your sweet potatoes and your soybeans, then you go back to growing cotton two years, and then peanuts two years, and then cotton two years, so on and so forth, so that you can really keep that soil healthy. And as he came up with this idea, and as the farmers were doing that, there was an abundance of soybeans and peanuts and sweet potatoes. So he decided to take all of those products and create stuff with it, experiment with it. So with peanuts, he invented over about 300 different things you can do with peanuts. Now he did not create peanut butter, let me just say that, but from peanuts, um, he came up with cooking oils, salad oil, soap, uh, wood stain, milk, paper, cosmetics, medicine, laxatives, and with sweet potatoes, he came up with over a hundred different things you could do with sweet potatoes, such as um, a vinegar, flowers, writing ink, stains, dyes, paints. So since we learned that he took peanuts and made a certain type of cooking oil from peanuts, I wanted to try my best at extracting the oils 
from peanuts. Now I've never done this before. I don't know if it's going to work, but these are the steps that I did. I took peanuts. I got them out of their shells. I rinsed them off first in cold water and then I tried to also get the uh, like those flaky peanut skins off of the peanut pieces as well. I also washed them off with warm water and after these two washings I took all of those peanut pieces just by themselves and I put them in warm water to soak for about 15 minutes. This helps soften up the peanuts so that when I go on to my next step which is um, like grinding them down and blending them they're a lot softer and a lot more easier to blend up into like a thick thick paste. So I waited these 15 minutes to let that warm water seep into the peanuts to try to moisten them up even more and soften them. Then I drained the peanuts and put them in my food processor and gave them a good, good um, chop and grind. Now, just the peanuts themselves, it was too dry. It, was, it wasn't working that well, so I adjusted um, the consistency of how moist it was. I slowly added water as I went on until I came up with a thick paste consistency. Now I hope this is the right um, texture and the right thickness or thinness that I need. Only one way to find out and after I put these um, the paste into containers I put a tight tight lid on them and then I pop them in the refrigerator overnight and hopefully that will help the oil kind of seep out of the paste and kind of um, rise up to the top and, and float and sit on top of the paste. Okay so here is my end result of my peanut paste being refrigerated overnight. And I'll be honest with you, it didn't turn out as well as I thought it would. If you take a closer look, you can see that there's really no layer of oil kind of sitting on top. And that was my goal. I took those peanuts, I soaked them, I blended them, and my goal was to, after they were refrigerated, to be able to see that separation of oil from the chunky, chunky paste. So this is a good moment for science as far as trial and error goes. So maybe I didn't do something correctly in my steps. Maybe I didn't use enough water when I blended my peanuts. Maybe it needed to be a really, really thin thin paste and not so thick. So maybe by adding water, more water, it would have helped with the oil being able to separate to the very top of my containers. So that's one possibility or prediction that I have on why my experiment didn't work. But you know what? That's what's so fun about science is Sometimes it works and you see those great, great results at the very end. And then sometimes, you know what? You learn from your mistakes. You go back, you fix them. You do something new until you get the results that you want. Now the third inventor I want to talk about is a woman. And this woman made it big during her time. She was the first African-American woman to become a millionaire and by doing so she ended up creating a hair care product selling that product and becoming so popular and famous within the black communities that she was able to be so successful with her hair care product so this woman's name was Sarah Breedlove 
when she was born. But during her career, her second husband actually convinced her to change her name to Madame C.J. Walker as far as branding goes and, and selling the product. So that is what she is known as, even though she was born to a different name. Now this woman was born almost 150 years ago, and that was around the time of the Civil War. So her parents were born as slaves, but Miss Walker was actually the first of all her siblings, all her brothers and sisters, to be born free, just because of the year that she was born. And a lot happened during those first 20 years of her life. So she was born, her parents passed away when she was six or seven. She ended up getting married at the age of 14. She had a kiddo. And then her husband, her first husband died when she was 20. That's a lot to happen in the first 20 years of your life. But she didn't give up. She kept going on with life. Um, she kept loving her daughter. And as the years went on with her life, she started to realize and become aware that something was going on with her head, um, her scalp, her hair. Um, it was very, very dry, very dirty. It started to fall out. But you have to remember, 150 years ago, people um, did things differently than we do now. They didn't bathe as often. They didn't wash their hair as often. Um, the same kind of shampoos and cleaners that we have now, they weren't around back then. So she started to lose her hair. And so there weren't a lot of hair products for women um, of all races back then to help with those types of scalp conditions. So she started to look around her house and to try to experiment with different ingredients. And she even had to get products from a different location, bring them over to add those to her, um, her predictions and her experiments. So she, her problem was she had a scalp treatment and she was that wasn't very good and she was losing her hair. And her solution was, well, she needed a to do two things. She needed to clean her hair more often and she needed to make some sort of hair ointment to put on her scalp that contained sulfur. So as she concocted this solution that was very, very beneficial to her hair, she thought of the idea with her second husband to produce a lot of this hair care product and sell it to people around in her community, specifically the um, African American community around her. So she started small. She went door to door to door and really getting personal with the people in her neighborhood. And she became popular. And so she wanted to expand her business. She wanted to sell more to more people. So she couldn't do it all by herself. So she asked other ladies to come and she gave them jobs. These were other black women that she helped train to become more familiarized with her hair care product. And these ladies went out and they helped her sell so many products. And so Madame C.J. Walker started to get more money in as she was selling more products. And so she became a millionaire. And she didn't let that go to her head. Um, she didn't get all fancy and, and forget who helped her get to the place to where she was at. So she chose to take some of those earnings, that money given to her from selling those products and give it back to the community. She helped by donating money to her people in her community, to certain charities. She even gave money to scholarships for young black women who were wanting to be students at certain colleges. And so she was a very successful 
entrepreneur. That's a big, big word. Entrepreneur. That just means you start a business, you sell products, you get money in return, and you become super, super successful. So what I have here are two items that are some of the ingredients found in Madam C.J. Walker's um, wonderful hair grower. One is um, like a petroleum jelly. It's a very, very thick ointment. It's not runny like water. And the other is coconut oil. And this looks like a solid, but as soon as you kind of dig into it and you um, smooth it on, it gets really, really oily. So some other ingredients found in her hair grower that she marketed to African American women, um, like I mentioned, were sulfur, there was also beeswax, copper sulfate, and violet extract. And as you can see, this type of concoction, this like mixture of this petroleum jelly and this coconut oil is making my, um, just my hand here, really, really smooth and soft. So if you were a person who was kind of suffering from this scalp condition, um, which was making you lose your hair, something like this, um, like her hair grower would help you um, really get your hair back into a healthy state by making sure that you had a good amount of moisture on your scalp and of course you would have to also make sure that you were washing your hair properly and more regularly. Now my last inventor I want to talk about might be a little bit closer to home as to what you guys might have or use at home. This man invented a toy that got so popular, so popular, especially when I was a kid. And you might have one at home or you might have seen one or played with one or used one. Dun, 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 dun. This inventor, this man, Lonnie Johnson, is the creator of the Super Soaker, the original water gun. Okay, in all seriousness, Lonnie Johnson, Mr. Johnson was a genius. He was so smart as far as mathematics goes, science goes, he invented a lot of things. You know what, as a young boy, he loved to take things around his house and tinker with them and play with them and, and create things like rubber band guns and bamboo shoot shooters and and he would take some of his dad's tools and and just play around and and create things with his imagination and as he grew up Mr. Johnson joined the Air Force and later on he went on to work for NASA do you know how smart you have to be in, in science, in math, and engineering to work for NASA. It, it's just mind boggling. But Lonnie Johnson, such, such a great man. He did so many things and invented some great, great things. We wouldn't have our water guns without that man today. So like I mentioned, he loved getting to make rocket ships at home and getting to make all different sorts of things as a young young boy. He even created some sort of rocket fuel 
in his mom's kitchen and and she didn't get quite mad because he was being a genius at the time but you can only imagine what it would be like if your kiddo was making some sort of fuel in your kitchen oh my goodness there could be an explosion and when he got a little bit older he created his own robot his own robot and that robot had a name they called it Linux L-I-N-U-X and it could do all sorts of things um, compressed air cylinders and valves allowed Linux's body to turn and its arms to move the switches came from an old broken ju jukebox which is like a a machine that played music at the time. Lonnie used a tape recorder to program Linux and as a bonus the wheels looked like eyes. How cool is that? And he made it out of scrap metal which is just like random pieces of um, items made out of metal that are maybe from cars or old machines and in school he entered this um, robot that he made into a um, like a science fair and he ended up getting first place which at the time it was kind of hard because um, our country's history has not been nice to people of color and um, Caucasian people have always had the upper hands and so he had to work that much harder and put in that much more effort just to do really really well but his brain is a genius he is a genius he's full of ideas and imagination and I'm so happy that he and his robot won at that science fair Now I mentioned that he worked at NASA and at one point NASA was trying to send something in space to go around or orbit to come close to Jupiter and all of its moons and they needed someone to get the job done. So when NASA was sending an orbiter and probe called um, Galileo to Jupiter the space agency needed to ensure a constant supply of power to the orbiters computer memory so they needed someone who works for NASA to be able to make enough energy and memory for this machine and our guy Mr. Lenny was just the man to do it the engineer had to figure out how to do it and um, his challenge was to come up with a lightweight backup system able to keep essential functions going in case the main power was lost aye 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 what a mouthful but we know Mr. Johnson and his creativity and imagination and his love for science and math would get him there his engineering skills and technology skills at the time would blast him away to be successful at this mission for NASA as the um, machine photographed Jupiter and its moons Galileo was supported by the power package that Lonnie designed much of what we know about Jupiter today could have been at risk in a power failure if it were not for Lonnie. Good, good job, Lonnie. So as Lonnie went on throughout his career, he ended up making things um, at his home work space, his workshop. And one of the things he came across and started thinking about more and more and more was um, refrigerators and air conditioners. They needed some sort of new cooling system. But he was trying to come up with a different version of that which wasn't bad for the environment. 
he had an idea of using water and air pressure, which are like considered um, environmentally friendly components of his experiment, instead of using bad things that were bad for the environment. And with this pump and nozzle right here, he practiced in his bathroom at home. And as he went to turn everything on to see if it all worked, the pump ended up working. So all of that water and all of the pressure worked together to make this stream of water kind of blast across the bathroom. And there we have kind of the next invention, um, or the first step for his next invention, which would later be the um, super soaker or the water gun. So he tried making this prototype um, into a toy. And as he made that prototype, he kind of tested it out to see if it worked, and it did. You had to kind of pump it up, build up some pressure, and then when you pulled the trigger or squeezed the trigger, the water escaped. It forced, that water pressure forced out, that air pressure forced out the water from the gun. And he tried to sell this idea to companies to make some money from it, but it didn't really go his way. He kept hearing, no, 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 no. But you know what? He didn't really give up. There were some not so good things that happened throughout his life. He tried to look for more toy companies that would maybe like this idea, that would want to manufacture it and make it. And um, one day, woo, he came across a group, a company that was willing to listen to him. And lo and behold, they liked his idea. They agreed to make it. He, um, he ended up selling his idea to this company. And that has made him a very, very well-known man in the toy company and the engineering company. Thanks everyone for joining me today talking about famous African-American inventors in our history. Now remember, you can be an inventor, I can be an inventor. All you have to do is just keep going. Keep using those ideas that you have, find things around you, use some tools, be creative, use your imagination, and never give up. Keep going until you figure out what you want to make. And if it's not perfect or if it's not the way you want it, try again. Do different steps. Figure it out. Solve your problem until you are happy with your results. Thanks, guys. Bye.